Another episode of the AAU Overtime Podcast. First time live since the national tournament. Jordan DeLuciano, as always, and joining me now, we got a big weekend ahead of us. Season's not over yet. Helping us preview the All-Star Tournament, Executive Director Scott Solomon. Thanks for joining the pod, and welcome back to the pod, as always. Uh, it's it's good to be back. Uh, yes, we are we are in the home stretch here. Uh, you know, home stretch here for the season. One more big event, um, and then we get to enjoy a bit of the off season, which we have work to do during. But yeah, you know, one more big event before we call it quits on our fifth anniversary season. So one last event, one last tournament. We had the national tournament rack wrap up last. Uh, in this past March and now on to the all-star challenge before we get into anything we're going to reveal some jerseys we're going to go over format and we're going to go over what is everyone playing for but Scott how long has this been in the works who was involved in making this uh, uh, making during this process making this possible and what was the inspiration how long back did it go did you guys have this in mind so this is something that I've been a part of for a while at a couple of different levels, at the collegiate level um, and even at the high school junior level, where, you know, especially here in college, where players are choosing education than hockey. I mean, that's the generic thought process when they're leaving their junior team, when they're leaving their high school team, when you're leaving their travel teams, you know, what's next in life? And it's college. Now, we offer so many opportunities for these players to keep playing. Um, and there are plenty of tremendous hockey teams, you know, in AAU college hockey that they could choose to join. Generally, though, their decisions are led by their education. So there are super talented hockey players that are pre-med and going to school at med schools that generally may not be able to compete at the division one level or may not be able to make nationals. They're continuing to play this game that we love and they're doing it at a great level. Um, but maybe this player is a D one player. You know, maybe this player is at that level as one of the top players in the country. And because they never get to make nationals, they don't get to showcase that the concept here of the all-star challenge is to get our best together. You know, get the best of the best, get the best product on the ice that AAU college hockey has to offer um, in a showcase event like this. Probably, and I'm not going to say definitely, I've talked to enough of these conference commissioners and conference heads that I cannot say definitely, but probably a touch less pressure than nationals. Yeah, man, maybe a little bit, yeah. But again, it depends on who you ask. There are people that are, are, that are looking forward to banging heads for conference pride. A little trash talking going on, a little that, that's always a good time. But generally less pressure than nationals, but at a higher level. I mean, all six of these teams that are coming to Fort Lauderdale this weekend are, it's four first lines. I mean, it's top flight talent. So the concept here is getting the best players in AAU college hockey together in an all-star format to showcase what this level of hockey really is. And you're going to have, I remember you mentioning uh, months back when this was kind of just being teased back in the fall, you're going to have four first lines going, whether it be on the forward end, three first line defensive pairings, a 1A, 1B situation in net. And like you said, it's not just conference pride on the line here. It's Division two players, Division three players that are getting some ice time with D1 players that are trying to show like, hey, even though I'm on a D2 team or a D3 team, I can hang with the best of the best. Oh, I mean, I won't... <clears throat> I won't name names because I'll forget somebody and then I'll get myself in trouble. But I, yeah, like, hey, I why don't you mention this person or that team? Yeah, or this oh, guy, yeah you know? I cannot name names, but I will tell you that there some of the best talent in AAU college hockey is not at the division one level. What makes a division one team, a division one team and makes those 16 teams that played in our pilot season this year is depth. I mean, they can grind you down in a five-day event by running their four deep, their power play. Uh, I mean, that's what makes a program division one. But what makes an all-star is individual talent. And I will tell you, there is just as much, if not more, individual talent at D2 and D3 than D1. D1 just has more of it. In terms of that depth, and oh, also I mean, that's what yeah. makes the difference. It's not about the individual skill level. There is, I mean, our, I mean, our D two 
player of the year, which I won't reveal, or our D3, I mean, without even a moment of pause, uh, their D1 players, they might be NCAA players. So, uh, with the tournament coming up, there's a lot like scheduling wise and a new point system as well. So it might be a lot for everyone. Scott, if you just run down the list and everyone's like, oh, I'm trying to remember what he's saying. Don't worry. Not only is Scott going to have you covered, we got you covered as well. So Scott, the floor is yours. What is going to be the point system wins, losses, tiebreakers? What's going on this weekend when the conference is lockheads? So we want to have fun. I mean, that's the key here. This is an all-star showcase event. Uh, There's still full checking. It's still hockey, you know, all that type of stuff. But we wanted to make it more of that carnival-like atmosphere. We want to keep things interesting. We always want guys working hard. So we put together a point system like a Ryder Cup where where the team is accumulating points for a whole bunch of different things. So – Every period matters. You know, play the next 20 minutes. You know, a lot of these coaches say, win the next 20 minutes, win the next 20 minutes, win the next 20 minutes. Well, okay, if you do, you you get a point. So every time your team, and there's six of them, and and, and we'll walk through that in a moment, but each time you win a period, it's a point. If you win the game in regulation, so normal 20-minute period, 16-minute game, uh, you're going to get three points kind of like a soccer, you know, kind of a European soccer type. Yep. Um, So you get three points for winning in regulation. We are going to a shootout. Uh, Straight to it? Yep, straight to a shootout. Okay. We're going to put on a show. This whole thing is going to be videoed and photographers and videographers for future commercials that we're shooting and website stuff and all that. So let's put on a show. I mean, let's, let's go right to a shootout. So if you're tied after regulation, three-man shootout, got to keep things moving. Um, if you win in the shootout, or I'll say when you win in the shootout, someone's going to win it, um, you know, you, you're going to get two points. So a little bit less of a separation in the standings by winning uh, in a shootout than if you won it in regulation. And if you lose in a shootout, at least you got there. We're going to give you a point for that. Um, you blow somebody out. Yeah, go ahead. Keep the front of the gas. That's certainly fine. So if you win by four or more, there's there's an extra point for that. And if any of these all-star goalies pitch a shutout, you know, uh, playing behind this top flight defense, we're going to give two extra points for that. So uh, so that's going to be the point. And that's going to determine the seeding because each one of these teams is going to play Friday night to open up the event. They're going to play again Saturday morning. They're coming back to the rink Saturday night. So it's really three games. Yeah, it's a long day. So it's really three games in 26, 27 hours when it's all said and done. It's like back to their travel hockey days playing tournaments, you know, when they're traveling. They would would play two-a-days. So this is uh, back to the old days. It is. And then based upon the result of those three, I'll call them pool play games, uh, we're going to seed them based on points, based upon this point system. And one will play two in the championship game on Sunday. Three will play four and five will play six. So based upon the points that they accumulate through this scoring system, a Friday and Saturday, we will seed them for their game on Sunday. And the top two point getters will play for the championship. And what times will, uh, and not maybe not a specific time or time frame on Sunday, will they be morning games, early afternoon on that Sunday? Yeah, we're keeping travel, you know, at the forefront of our mind for our fans and our players. So they're playing Friday night. So they have all day Friday to travel and get down there. Games start uh, about 530 all of the schedule and the rosters are in the AAU app. So if you download the AAU College Hockey app on either the Android or the Apple Store, um, change the season. Uh, yeah, so always going to- very important, yeah. Scott. I get a lot of people that ask me, like, oh, what? I can't, I'm on the wrong year. Everyone, like Scott just said, change the season. On the top right corner, there's going to be yep. a button, change season. And you'll yep. click on to AAU All Star the All Star Challenge. Continue. So we do keep our and we do archive some of our old stuff. People want to see their points. They want to pull up their old stats. So a lot of that's archived in the app. But 
The current season, obviously, is the regular season. So that shows all the stats and standing from the 2023-24 regular season. In there still is the Amateur Athletic Union National Championship, which we just concluded about a month ago. But the new season in there, if you're looking for it, has the schedule and the rosters and will have the standings. Uh, and that is under the All-Star Challenge, uh, which is the new season in the AAU College Hockey app which you can download. So based upon those points and the schedule, we have teams playing Friday night, Saturday a.m., Saturday p.m., and then those seeding games on Sunday are all in the morning with the championship game being about 12.30. So now uh, with the big reveal, we talked about it a little bit at Nationals, but now what is everyone going to be wearing their customized jerseys? Scott, last time you came onto the pod before Nationals, we were going through some of the jerseys. I was wearing a custom NHL jersey, one of the retro reverse retros on my pod reveal show. So, uh, Scott, any uh, additions to your AAU collection? Because I know you had some <laughs> back in, like, I believe, end of February, early March when we had a pod. But any additions to your jersey collection before we get into the reveal <laughs> of the All-Star jerseys? Yeah, so last time I was on, when I was home, which I am now, um, I brought out some of my old jersey collection. And I, I showed the, the uh, Gator Skin jersey, which I bought when they did Savannah two years ago. Uh, made me look brilliant as they were our D2 national champs this year. Uh, so I was getting ahead of the curve with that. Um, and I did. I showed some of my old Albany stuff. And generally, you know, I show my Auburn jersey. And, and generally, when teams do fundraise, and I don't do them all. I, 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 mean, I find them. People send them to me, things like that. I tend to go on and find some. I think, as I mentioned last time, I revealed some jerseys. Um, my oldest daughter, who interviewed me at Nationals that one time, uh, she, you know, she loves the jersey. She wears them, you know, to school and shows them off, whatever they came to be. So she gets to pick one of them. But last time I showed the jerseys, uh, it was amazing. I got a bunch of text messages. Hey, why don't you have anybody from here? Why don't you have this? And why don't you have this one? And Murph from Hockey House actually said that my collection rivals his. Uh, so I took that as a personal challenge to go spend more money. Oh, than I needed. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now I'm in competition with Murph. So that's gotcha. fine. I, I'm sure after he sees this, I'll get another text. Um, but I did. I I went out and I wanted to get some exotic ones. I wanted to get some different ones. I wanted to get some special occasions. So I did. I, 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 I yo, oh, I got them. So I got this app state jersey was actually my first one from the ACC. Um, the outdoor governor jersey, very cool. App State, uh, very proud of that one. Rare one. So a lot like of people. Logo. Yeah, it's a cool look. Very, very cool logo. And retro. I mean, it's got the retro stripes. You know, I really like the way they did that. Um, so I did that. Um, Don from High Point, um, you know, who calls me often enough or texts me, they put together this for their outdoor game, the High Point Purple. Very classy. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very classy. Uh, so a second ACC jersey. Um, they had a great run at Nationals. Very, very good you know, Division II mm -hmm. team uh, with, I know, higher than that aspirations at some point in the not-too-distant future. They launched a D3 team this year. So I grabbed the high point jersey. Um, another one, um, Buff State. You know, Buff State, uh, Tim Turner and the boys at Buff State actually mailed this to me that I, I needed to have this. This is what I was told. I was told I needed, needed to have it. No, I needed to. I needed to. Uh, Tim's a good friend, does a ton of work, does a yes. lot of our digital marketing. Actually made the logo. Tim made that point, um, that point thing that we just went over. Um, okay. Yeah, Tim had bronchitis, you know, played sick. You know, he, you know so Tim was playing hurt. He had bronchitis and still made – the point system uh, graphic for us that you just had up there. It was the Tim Turner flu game. Just like yeah, Michael oh, yeah. Jordan. No, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we appreciate that. He, he's a hockey player. I mean, he's playing hurt. You know, he's playing hurt. So we, we, so we did appreciate that. But after the last um, pot, he told me I had to have that. Um, one of the leaders in the clubhouse for my daughter to maybe attend school, uh, as she talks about, is FAU. So this battle of Those the alternates. Beach, yeah, yeah, you know, Battle of the Beach jersey. This was the Battle of the Beach that the CHS put out there um, this year. Very, very cool tournament. Um, and the minute they had this one, without going through a long-winded story, um, you know, Binghamton, 
Uh, last year's uh, national champion D two made the jump to D one, obviously, but when the but when Binghamton uh, put together um, their fundraiser, I went off and did that um, again. Personal connection to Binghamton when they had an NCAA team. Uh, that's where I was looking. I actually, dropped their program the year half before I left high school. But that's actually where I was looking. So I was very very excited uh, when they after winning the national championship. Um, you know, two years ago now, yeah. uh, they they went out and did a fundraiser. So I wanted to support that. Um, and the only other one I brought with me today, based upon what we're doing, is the original Empire. I remember those. Yep, I yeah. remember those. Yeah. The original Empire um, Select Team jersey. So this was the original All Star Challenge type. Uh, they gave me one way back when when I was still running it. Well, oh, there it is. Uh, again, the 66, which I wore, uh, Joe Maisie, as we talked about, copied me. Uh, yes. you know, yeah. So we, so we talked Maisie about and Mario Lemieux copied you and then yeah. it was Lemieux, then Joe Maisie. And actually it was Joe Maisie, then Lemieux who wore yeah. the 66. Yeah. I, uh, That's how the and I, and I, yeah. And I, and I, so, so that was the original empire. So yeah, I've added to the collection. I, I've added to the collection. I'm very proud of, uh, but actually exponentially more important than my collection is what these guys are wearing you know, this weekend. So yeah, um, Scott, as you say it, yep. College Hockey South's got both of them. They got the two, two teams, the white and the grays. And Scott, again, the floor is yours. Take us through these. You got ACC on the right, bottom left. So we'll go bottom row, left to right. You got the NIHC, New England Conference on the left. Right down the middle on the bottom row is the Upstate Conference. And then the Empire, that black one on the bottom right. But yes, take us through these. So first and foremost, you know, we did all of these through our strategic partner, uh, Verbero. So the Verbero design team, I'll hope I'm right. If not, I'm sorry, design team, but led by Evelyn, who, who does a lot of the work with them. Um, if it's not Evelyn, then take the credit, Evelyn, and, and, and ignore everybody else. But uh, they put this together for us. Uh, you know, Jake, uh, you know, who runs their sales division, helped put the graphic together with us. But so with our strategic partner, Verbero, putting this together, um, they just did a tremendous job showcasing all of these jerseys. Now, we can talk about them. I'm not going to say anything too good or bad because I'm going to be with everybody this weekend. If this pod was after, maybe I'd be more honest. Yes. Um, I think get a lot of confrontation. Like, what, what, what do you think of this jersey? Why would you say this negative? Why didn't you mention this, you know? That was just oh, there's a couple of good stories. No, no, you got to be strategic about your comments. Yep. Um uh, but, the, but look, the, there's a couple of very easy things that jump off the page. The first one is very easily said, we assigned everybody a color. You know, so everyone, there's really no clashing. When these teams play each other, there's not going to be a problem. So everyone's going down. Not only do they have these tremendous uh, customized jerseys, but they have shells and socks to go with these. So everyone's going to look the part. Um, some of these have been revealed already. Uh, I know... Um, Kyle has no patience. I'm just kidding. This pod is probably a little bit late based upon schedules, but Kyle revealed his CHS jerseys. Uh, so I'll start there. I mean, you know, they've become famous almost, and I think it's very well done for the logo more on the sleeve than the center chest. Center chest is very, you know, it, you know, has been around for a while, but the map of the CHS covering the geographic footprint that they cover is on the sleeve there. So that's very, very well done. Uh, they did a fundraiser um, with uh, sweatshirts and hoodies with Verbero. I think that was last year. Don't it may be earlier this year with that on the back. Very, very cool. So very customizable. Uh, it has the AAU um, all-star challenge logo, you know, on the left chest, the CHS, and then stars all over the place. So I'm just waiting for the captain, whoever that is, of that white team to come out with that Captain America shield. It looks like an Avenger. You know, I it, think does. It, it does. Yeah. It does. It does, right? So it does. Like so he'll have America. the shield. Maybe he'll, he'll spike it into the ice, you know, yeah. whatever it's going to be. It's going to be really, really interesting, you know, to watch the Avengers come out. Uh, you know, that'd be a that funny place. sight. Whoever like is first on the ice for the white, whatever color, whatever the white or the gray team, they come out with the, the uh, Captain America shield. It, it would be very fitting. It, it looks exactly it like Captain be. America. 
Yes, yes. And whoever the captain is should have the name Captain America for the entire weekend. If not, I think it's a missed opportunity in the locker room. That's just my yeah. opinion. Yeah, just, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, but again, yeah, Kyle and that and, and that very, very famous, like I said, now because they've done so many fundraisers with it. It's very well done. It's on their website with that sleeve logo. Very, very cool. Um, I don't want to be wrong. I'll make the comment anyway. Wouldn't be the first time, as many of you know. But I believe the right sleeve, although it says CHS on this, I believe that's where their team logo was going. So if you played for Georgia, Tampa, Bama, South okay, Carolina, nice. Miami, whoever you played for, I believe that sleeve logo is actually their team logo based upon the jersey uh, of, of awesome. the player. Be very uh, per- personalized, very specific. Right, exactly. Player, I believe yeah. I'm right. Maybe not. I think Kyle told me that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's the level of customization that they did with those. So very, very cool in my opinion. Did you have comments on it? You know, I was I was thinking the same thing with um, the team logos as well. Because you see them on the other jerseys as well. You see them on the shoulders, on the Empire and Upstate. And we'll get to those in a second. But I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, would they like, is this just the template? And they just put the logo on them for the base Jersey, but would they put their team's logo, like for Georgia or Tampa or, or whatnot. But I think he hit the nail on the head with Kyle Chucky South. It is a captain America, uh, like uh, <laughs> vibe you're getting. from them. Yeah. So that'll get me in trouble at some point, but I, I you know, you got to speak the truth. Um, moving along, uh, the, the, uh, the ACCHL Jersey, um, with this green, this is actually you know a very cool story because they they brought the ACC brought a uh, all star team of their own um, on a European tour uh, this intercession. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but just after the holidays, they went over uh, for just over a week. They played uh, some tier two and tier three you know professional semi pro teams in Europe. So um, I know Mike Wally, Andy Musto, the guys that run all of that. They put together an ACCHL all-star team, went to play in Europe, and are using these same all-star jerseys, um, you know, for the event. Verbero did those, made sense, do these again, maybe some supplemental fill-ins, um, you know. But, yeah, very, very cool. Uh, they went away from their kind of traditional colors. I mean, yes. and, yeah, and, and, and they brought out these very, very sharp, um, you know, very, very sharp neon color green. Um, you know, you want to stand out. You're an all-star. You want to be loud. You're in Europe, you know, whatever works. Uh, but down here, like I said, I mean, it fits perfectly with what we needed from a jersey collection. But those jerseys were actually designed for a European trip earlier this year. It reminds me, uh, if you know, maybe some of the viewers know, the Dallas Stars have an alternate. I believe it's, this is like neon on black. The Dallas Stars is black on neon with like solid okay. black with neon trim. This, it's very similar. It reminds me, I immediately thought Dallas Stars alternate jersey. Again, very cool. They incorporated the Stars logo, not nearly as Captain America as the CHS. But again, they, they have the Stars. It does the job. Again, simple, basic, classic. Um, you know, not, not, not a lot going on, but again, very, very classic style. Like I showed that app state Jersey, another ACC team, you know, I wouldn't call it retro because of the color, but again, that layout's very sharp. So ACC, that neon green with that black trim, you got the star pattern as well, right in the middle and then in the logo yep. as well. So got one hand on the mic one hand on the pet on the mouse zooming in and out but yes any ihc i'm gonna have to put the mic down to zoom in okay i'll go. take it from here jordan yeah yep. that, bottom that, left corner the new england conference yeah so again very patriot new england very cool um again i'm you know i'm a yankee fan so i don't always love the new england reference but i'll i'll yeah, get over it i'll same. get over it for now it's okay um and I know some of the players did this. Uh, Mike Hecht, who was an absolute amazing addition to the New England uh, Conference. He's the commissioner up there, uh, joined last season, did a tremendous job with them. Um, openly admitted that he is not a graphic designer, nor has an artistic bone in his body. So he farmed this off to some of the players that will be coming down. Um, again, very, very cool. Very, very red, white, and blue. I mean, I, to me, exactly what you would expect. Kept the AAU All-Star Challenge logo in the left, uh, on the top left chest. Stars, very, very New England Patriots, you know, very, very much so. Um, but again, I mean, to me, 
if you didn't go this route from New England, it would, would have probably been a miss. You know, it, it fits exactly the vibe of New England. Yeah, with that, yeah, the Patriot right down the middle, yeah, the Stars. It's it's it fits perfectly with the Statesman right down in the middle. It's exactly what you would want. And, right. and you said the players all contributed to this yeah. jersey. Yeah, yeah. That's so great. like again, yeah, Mike who organized the trip and some of the coaches uh, just let the players pick what they wanted. You know, and I know they went back and forth with some of the uh, sleeve stars, no sleeve stars, but whatever the case may be, they they landed on this um, again, all star logo, got the stars in it as you would expect. Uh, Verbero delivered with another very cool center patch design, uh, and again, to me, exactly what you would expect uh, and almost need coming out of New England. So now uh, moving on, we got the down right down the middle. We got the Upstate Conference. They went with that different. Everyone's got their logo set and center. Upstate Conference. They threw it on the shoulders, and they have the All Star Challenge right down the middle. So they're the one oddball here. Yeah, and that and that blue, uh, which to me is very cool. I, you know, I, I, I love that blue. Um, that's the blue in their logo. So they kind of picked up that from their shield. Um, they did. They gave AAU uh, center billing with the all-star logo. Um, again, I can't speak for the design exactly, but I do know that this is more commemorative of the all-star event. You know, you hang it. That's what you see. Um, very cool keepsake. All these uniforms are going to be a tremendous keepsake for all these players. You know, you get a full kit, jersey, shells, socks. So they gave AAU college hockey center billing. They have the conference logo up on the shoulders. Um, I do really like, out of maybe all the jerseys, this star pattern that kind of fades and goes, yep. uh, to me, was excellent. I thought it was excellent. So, whereas everybody else has got stars, um, this is very cool with the fade in and out. Um, you know, it leaves the center blank for the logo, so it's not too busy. Uh, doesn't give off Avenger vibes, you know, but at the same token, really good. It's got that almost flag look to the bottom very very cool yeah. you know it's it's i like that faded star look as well you know it's very sip it's a very simple looking jersey but sometimes simple is enough and it, it does its job yeah these uh upstate conferences uh did they know that they could put it on their logo on the chest or did they just opt to put the all-star game logo like, are they are they, they like no we'll do something nice for the all-star game we'll put them on the chest like, did they know they could have put theirs on the chest, or they, just they had, look? On the I I made introductions to the Verbero design team and said, "Go ahead. You want classic? You want retro? You want this? You want this? Whatever they wanted per se." Um, so anyone had free reign. I, I I didn't really know what to expect out of any of these jerseys. Uh, you know, so the fact that New England created a logo that didn't exist before, very cool. I mean, you know, the, you know, the fact that, you know, college hockey South decided to be superheroes for the weekend. Very cool. You know, very, very cool. Um, but no, you know, you're going to get a lot of fun. Once you get there, especially because you're going down South to Fort Lauderdale, you're going to immediately get hit with the superhero comments or the Avenger uh, comments, the Captain America comments. I really hope someone comes out with a cape. I, I really I hope mean, someone. one more time. Let's look. I mean, come on, come on. No, I really do. I, I He's Captain really, America. <laughs> I, I do hope somebody comes out with a cape. Yeah, someone's um, got it. Like, if anyone on the team or the players, the players, the coaches, or someone, uh, uh, Kyle's watching, someone get the players a cape or the shields. It would fit absolutely perfect with these jerseys. They're, look, they're very, very cool. I'm not trying to take them away. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just having some fun with it. They're very, very cool jerseys. I, I bet Kyle is busy right now with the real job and he'll watch this on replay because if not my phone and it, it would just right next to me would be blowing up with, yeah. you know, what the heck is happening? Uh, no, it, very, very it, cool. They're very nice jerseys, you know, but like you said, all in good fun. They are nice jerseys, but they do look like a captain America. But back to your point, um, they could have done anything. And, and, and again, I, I, and I, I, I'm not saying it to backtrack. I am saying it because, you know, College Hockey South was probably the most customization with the team on the sleeve, the, their map on the other sleeve. Uh, you know, very, very well done. I love the UNYCHL. Um, I love that flag type fading stars. New England creating a logo for the event. Uh, I like the story behind the ACC. You know, I you know understand that that was a European trip. And just as you go down to the final jersey on the list, 
it's almost hysterical to me that you gave the layup that the UNYCHL has a very classic look, simplistic, nice, and right what you would expect from the Empire. There's nothing simple or subtle or quiet about it. I think your microphone's off. Is your microphone off? Good luck, Scott. Yeah, I put my mic off because I didn't want it rolling around on the table when it was on, so good luck. <laughs> but yes, jet black, the purple lettering right down the middle, yeah. and then the statue of a uh, right right at the bottom of the screen. So you go from yeah. subtle, like you said, to now empires yeah. in your face. Kind of yeah, yeah. So completely what you would expect out of the empire. Um, just, you know, uh, but again, very, very well done. I know that when these were being designed, um, they went back and forth. So a little insider tip here. Fordham, uh, Fordham University, uh, an empire team, obviously did the skyline in one of their uniforms, uh, special edition uniforms. So yep. Fordham did very a nice skyline yeah. jersey. Very, very, very well done. Yeah. Um, so I know they weren't sure if they wanted to go with a skyline type look. Um, now, this is more, you know, this is this is grander than the Fordham one. Fordham was just in the striping. But uh, very, very cool, very ominous, you know, night sky, very stuff, you know, black, you know, with the purple, very classic, very regal, which is what they like to go with, with the purple. Um, but yeah, nothing simple, nothing subtle, and nothing quiet about the Empire rolling into anything. It fits who they are, the Empire yes, Conference, like you said at the beginning. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's really who they are. But yep, that is all six. You know, College Hockey South got those uh, two different teams, team uh, the white and gray team. But yes, these are the long-anticipated jerseys for the all-star challenge. And like you said, College Hockey South, they're going to personalize the jerseys. Will they get, uh, obviously, numbers, names on the back as well? Will it be that uh, personalized as well? Uh, again, I don't know what the jer- I don't know what each team picked. It was certainly an okay. option uh, for them. So I really don't know the level of customization that some of these guys did. Um, okay. Like I said, all the numbers and the names are in the app. So download that, take a peek. You'll have the rosters. You'll know who they are. But I don't know what's on the back of them because this is all I was sent. Gotcha. Yeah, you were, were in the same spot. So, okay. yes, those are the All-Star Game jerseys. We'll see them in action this weekend. But, Scott, so we went through the jersey, the point system. I'll pull it up one more graphic. What is everybody playing for this weekend in Fort Lauderdale? So, clearly, conference pride um, um, and individual stats, obviously. Uh, no, but more, but most importantly, what we've put together here, instead of giving them another trophy or a medal or something like that, we felt like the winner of the all-star challenge, you know, was going to, you know, had so much conference pride that they were delivering like a knockout blow to everybody else in AAU college hockey. So they're getting a championship belt. I mean, I don't know what else you would expect. Uh, WrestleMania getting... that just finished up for the WWE. How fitting, you know? With, yes, with okay, not belt. on my radar, but I'm glad you threw that in. <laughs> uh, at the at the end of the day, they are getting a fully customizable heavyweight championship belt. So I will tell you that the belt uh, will actually not look exactly like this. I will tell you what's happening, but the belt will be in the building. Now, the belt will be in the building. We will be uh, awarding the captain a- after that 1-2 game. Uh, they, the, they will be getting the belt. We're going to send the belt home with the team. And then all five of those plates, so the one in the middle with the All-Star Challenge logo, and then the two on either side currently with our shield and then our alternate uh, logo uh, with the stripes, uh, we're going to let the conference customize that. All five of those spots can be customized. You want to leave the All-Star Challenge logo. You want to put your conference logo. You want the captains, the coaches. You want other logos on it. Whatever you want, we're paying to have the belt customized by the captain, the coach, whoever the conference designates to be that point of contact. But they're playing for the heavyweight championship belt. They are the heavyweights of AAU, the heavyweight conference of AAU. Yeah, so that, it's pretty interesting. You know, usually everyone's battling for titles or the medal uh, tr- trophies or the medals. We saw that at the uh, national tournament. We see it at the conference tournaments. But this time we're adding uh, the championship belt. We see that uh, frequently. Uh, I believe the NFL and I think the NHL also. Uh, don't, I don't quote me on the NHL, but I know for a fact the NFL has team championship belts 
as well. And then every time, back to another WWE reference, every time a champion, a team wins a championship in a sport, let's say this past Super Bowl, the Chiefs win, WWE sends them over a championship title belt. So we're now hopping on the championship title trend. I just thought it was fitting. Uh, I'll I'll give John LaRochester the credit because it was certainly his idea. He ran it by me however weeks ago it was. And I just said, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, so, so John put that together he found the company, you know, he does a lot of that work behind the scenes, which we always appreciate uh, and couldn't do without him. So he put this together. Uh, and when he called, I'm like, yeah, it's the right answer. You know, it's just the right answer. So we're playing for a belt. Um, each game on Sunday, so the one, two, the three, four, and the five, six, will also crown the Verbero MVP player of the game. So those gold jerseys that Verbero is famous for will be back on Sunday. So the MVP of the one, two game, the MVP of the three, four game, and the MVP of the five, six game, they will get their Verbero MVP jersey as well. Um, and the winner of that one, two game will get the belt and have ultimate bragging rights for the rest of the season uh, going into next season, which is uh, to me very, very cool. And other than this a championship belt that the winner will get on Sunday, along with the MVP of the games, any other accolades being given out, any other uh, awards given out throughout the tournament, and not just in the tournament, in AAU in general coming up that people should keep an eye out for? Uh, yeah, and and to be very, very honest and very, very direct, the tournament is going to be great. We're going to have so much fun. All of those great things, the new point system, the awards, the cool jerseys, the photography, the videography, all of that. Uh, is going to be very, very cool. But there is nothing this weekend that I'm more excited about, and I've probably told this to 20 people uh, that I've talked to, than the first annual AAU College Hockey Awards. Uh, this To culminate the fifth season, we're putting on this showcase event. But more importantly, we are going to be crowning the first ever AAU All-Americans. So division, men's division one, two, three, and the women will both have We'll all have, all have, all four divisions will have a first team and a second team All American named awards for all 48 players. So three forwards, two D, and a goalie will make up the first team, same number, make up the second team, all four divisions. So 48 AAU All Americans are going to be given awards this weekend. If the winner is not in attendance, we're going to be mailing them their awards. But we have um, you know, some trophies. We have some accolades. So 48 AAU college hockey All-Americans, half of them being first team, half of them being second team. Uh, these will be announced on Saturday in between the AM and PM session. And in, in conjunction with that, the every division, you know, men's one, two, three, and women, will have the coach of the year. And the player of the year. So four coaches, four players, they will be getting their awards down there as well. So all told, 56 award winners will be getting uh, announced this weekend in between that Saturday uh, a.m. and Saturday p.m. session during our coaches meeting. Um, we have a slideshow. We have set to music. All of these will be going out on social media. Um, and we'll be giving the award to the players Saturday night uh, and the coaches as well. Very, very excited. Um, it's another way that we are very excited to be honoring these scholar athletes that are putting together tremendous resumes both on and off the ice. Yeah, it's another uh, – It's we thought it was Nationals the way you go out with a big bang at the end of Nationals, but – Wrapping up a full season that begins in September, now finishing up in April with awards, accolades, and then the battle of the conferences as well. So, Scott, yes, a big weekend ahead. It kicks off today's Thursday, kicks off tomorrow. What time are you getting there tomorrow? Uh, you'll be catching any of the first games. Yes, I I will be catching a flight kind of early, uh, well, I'm that late morning. Uh, I'll be down there about 3.30, headed right to the rink, looking forward to some good hockey. Uh, all weekend, and like I said, nothing has made me more excited this season than to honor those 56 award winners. The hockey will be great. The event should be fantastic. Should be the best product that AAU college hockey has ever seen on the ice. And again, what an exciting way to close out our fifth anniversary season.
So, AAU College Hockey All-Star Tournament in Fort Lauderdale kicks off tomorrow. Executive Director Scott Solomon, thank you once again for jumping on with all the big news that comes up, the preview and recap as always. So again, Scott, thank you for joining. And everybody tune in and check out the All-Star Challenge coming up this weekend. Alongside thank the you. Executive Director Scott Solomon, Jordan DeLuciano, AAU Overtime Podcast. We will see you 